Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting and educational episode of The Writing Lair. Uh, for those of you who are visiting me for the first time on this channel, my name is Brady Longmore. I'm an independently published author. I currently have four books in publication right now. I'm working on book number five. This channel, what it's all about, I like to talk about uh, reading, writing, and scary stuff. Uh, the paranormal, UFOs, Bigfoot, ghosts, all that kind of stuff. Um, tell stories, creepy stories, but I also like to talk about uh, the writing process and, and reading and publishing, all kind of focused through that independent, self-published lens, if you will. So if that sounds like it's of interest to you and you uh, and uh, you know, think that might be for you, then we are probably kindred spirits and should, you should probably take this moment right now to subscribe and like this video and help out a struggling, starving artist. Uh, anyway, um, so welcome, and those of you who are already subscribers, thank you, and welcome back. I'm glad to have you here. This is The Writing Lair, and today's episode, um, I, <laughs> I've talked a lot about paranormal stuff. I've told lots of spooky, scary stories on here already, and what I haven't done as much is actually talk about writing, and I pr keep plugging myself that I like to talk about writing. So this episode is going to be uh, centered around writing tips. Uh, what I'd like to talk about, I'm going to tilt my camera down here a little bit. Yeah, so you can see my jaws shirt a little better. Um, <clears throat> today's episode, I wanted to talk about uh, self-publishing, indie publishing. Uh, a little bit about that, and I'm going to give you guys the skinny, the down and dirty, the low down on self-publishing. Uh, should you do it? What are the pros? What are the cons? That kind of thing. So if you're interested, if you've been thinking about self-publishing, you're a writer and you're uh, you're curious to know, I ain't gonna be pumping you full of sunshine. Okay, this is gonna be the honest the honest truth from my perspective. And so with that, let's get this episode on the road. Again, welcome, and uh, for those of you who uh, are into writing and are interested in the publication, self-publishing, and, and stuff like that, uh, I invite you to just uh, hang on here and and listen to what I have to say. Um, I hope I hope it's of benefit. Um, I first published in 2016, so I've got four books out, and uh, boy, I went into it. I just jumped in feet first, head first, I guess, not feet first. Feet first is the safe way to go. Head first into a into murky waters that I had no idea what I was getting myself into, and since then I've I feel like I've you know I've I've uh, kind of uh, bushwhacked my way in through the uh, self publishing world a little bit, and I'd like to just offer you my perspective on it, and maybe some of you can can take uh, what I have to say to heart. This is kind of advice, so this is not instructions. This isn't a how to self publish. This is a why to self-publish and possibly a why not to self-publish. I got into it. I had dreams, you know, I still do. I still do. But I had, I, I had expectations and I, well, I really didn't know what to expect, but I, I guess my dreams and my expectations were like this and I didn't know how to separate them or I didn't know what to expect because, um, I got into it because I had a friend, I had an acquaintance, an online acquaintance. I consider him a friend. We've never met in person, but we've talked a lot online and stuff. And uh, a great author. Uh, uh, he is uh, independently published. His name is Robert Bidonato. I'll uh, leave a link to his books in the description if you're curious. He writes, uh, uh, what's the word on the Vigilante thrillers. And they're really good. He's written a, a trilogy. He's working on a fourth book. Uh, but I first made contact with him, and and uh, he was making a living. You know, he's he he was really doing well, and I thought I can do that. I can do that. So um, anyway, so I went in, you know, eyes wide shut, kind of. I didn't know what to expect, 
and I expected so much more. And I'd say I'll just put that right out there. I don't want this to be a video that discourages anyone by by no means, but I do want I do want it to be realistic and I don't want to you know I want people to realize what they're getting themselves into. And so this is my no BS discussion about self-publishing. Um, so <clears throat> let me just let me go through the the pros real quick okay for me I was in my 40s um, one of the pros for me is and I've talked about this before in past videos how to, to publish traditionally through a publisher is quite a process it's a daunting process of finding an agent uh, just finding an agent is a miracle okay not, well not a miracle it's possible but just finding an agent can be quite the task for and there's a lot of rejections and a lot of learning curve and stuff like that. I was getting to the game kind of late for me, and I was like, I don't, I don't have time. I want to get this ball rolling. So I researched it. I researched what it was all about. So let me give you some pros, okay? I have, I have a little list here. I wrote, I wrote some stuff down so I don't ramble too much. But uh, the thing I have written down here, uh, one of the pros is. Uh, to self-publishing is your book gets out there no gatekeepers okay there's no one telling you you can't do this there's no rejections okay you publish the book it's out there for the world to see it's it's out there there's uh there's no rejected manuscript that goes to the bottom of a drawer that can be good and that can be bad okay sometimes uh, the bad part or the the good thing is is yeah your book's out there the bad thing is is maybe it shouldn't be um, does that make sense? <laughs> Sometimes gatekeepers can be a good thing. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not denying that. There's something to experienced agents, experienced editors, experienced publishers being able to look at a book and determine if it's profitable, if it's going to sell, if it's going to make money. Without those gatekeepers, the floodgates are just wide open, and there's people self-publishing. You know, I don't know what is it a, a million titles a day or something, and then. And a lot of them, I'd say probably 99% of it is garbage. So we do need the gatekeepers in a way. So maybe your book, uh, how do I put this? I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be nice about it, but maybe it shouldn't be out there. And uh, but anyway, uh, there's there that can that gets determined quite quickly actually. But the the pros, I'm on the pros right now. <laughs> I'm already going into the cons. The pros are, so your book, you can publish your book. You don't have to wait for some uh, some person, some editor, some agent in some faraway office in New York or wherever they wherever they are to, to de deem your manuscript worthy. And sometimes the manuscript is great. Sometimes it's a great story, but it's just not what they're looking for. You know, they don't think it'll sell, that kind of thing. So, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. So anyway, <clears throat> next the next thing I have written down is you have total creative control. Uh, that's another great thing about being an indie author. And I've said this before in past in the past uh, videos. To me, there's a difference between indie, an indie author, and self-published author, or self-published. So yeah, I make this this uh, difference. Uh, where to me, self-published is more of a hobbyist, someone who's who wrote a book and then they don't plan on writing anymore they just wrote that one book they're have, kind of having fun they throw it up there for friends and family to buy an indie author indie, I use the term indie to differentiate from that an indie author is someone who's serious about it and is trying to make a career out of it uh, trying to make a legitimate business and and they're spending you know pretty serious money to make it happen they're investing just, just the same as anyone else investing in a in a small business, a restaurant, or you know whatever, a, a mechanic shop, or what anything like that. It's an entrepreneur, and that's me. That's an indie author. So, if you hear me, you know, back and forth when I say indie author, that's what I'm talking about. So, as an indie author, you have total creative control. That's another pro. There's no one telling you you ha can't have uh, your book can't be 500 pages long. There's no one telling you that. You need to include uh, 
a certain type of character or you need to get rid of a certain character or you need to have a certain type of scene or cut this scene or add this scene or we won't publish it okay total creative control you determine how long it is you determine how many books are in a series you know that kind of thing that's great that to me that was a huge when I was researching that was huge to me that was a big reason one of the big reasons I went uh, indie is because of the creative control um, and I'm not saying with publishers you don't have a lot of that too but there's also a lot of you know the stuff I mentioned that goes on from from what I know I'm, I've never been traditionally published but from what I've heard and read another pro is uh, actually you have a potential for more royalties now let's just cut out the big authors the Stephen Kings you know uh, those guys are untouchable they're like gods and uh, you know the, the the Twilight and the Hunger Games and stuff like that uh, but mid list so think of your mid list authors out there um, as an indie author publishing through Amazon or Apple or uh, all these other there's different ones besides Amazon believe it or not Kobo is another one uh, you with a traditional publisher they they give you a contract and and you you earn out the contract hopefully which means if they give you five thousand dollars you sell that many books and you earn out the contract which means you the publisher makes all their money back they invested and then beyond that there's usually some royalties once you have earned out uh, but with uh, with uh, self-publishing or indie publishing there's no contract that you have to earn out you don't it's the sky's the limit and you get a pretty good percentage through Amazon you get a 70% cut of your of your uh, books sold and that's that's actually that's actually really good if you compare it to traditional mid-list authors what they're being offered for their books so um, you know and your book stays relevant as long as you're willing to market it and 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 keep trying to make it relevant so that's another one uh, potentially more royalties I would say uh, someone not an indie author on Amazon sells let's say let's say he just blows out the stops and sells a hundred thousand copies he's probably gonna make more money than a mid-list author who sells out a hundred thousand copies because the Amazon the indie author isn't paying for warehouses and shipping and, and book you know the the bookstore isn't taking a cut they don't have an editor taking a cut they don't have a I mean an agent they don't have a publishing company taking a cut it's, you know so um, and 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 I could be wrong on some of this this is my understanding okay this is my perspective this is what as far as I know and if someone's watching this and knows more than me about it by all means correct me in the comments I I would appreciate it um, there might be authors out there uh, independently or uh, traditionally published authors who have had it who have experienced otherwise than what I'm saying right now okay one other thing I like about um, being indie published is you set the price and you set your own deadlines you're your own boss okay I uh, really like that I like to be able to work at my own pace and of course I try to work as fast as I can I want for for the sake of my fans and for the sake of my business it's it's good for business to be pumping out regularly which means like once a year if you can I had to cut cuz I, I was coughing there for a second I got watery eyes you might <laughs> I got something in my throat anyway um you set the price and you set the deadlines you're working at your own pace and it's your business it's your company and you're running it you want to run a sale run a sale you want to charge 10 bucks a copy for a Kindle charge 10 bucks a copy if it works it works um, so I, I think that's great I I, uh, um, I I've mentioned this before in another video you know I had a, a traditionally published friend who the, his sales on his book are stagnant because the publisher sets the price and he's not selling hardly any copies and then here's my little ebook his ebook costs as much as his paperback and I don't know why traditionally published companies do that it drives me crazy but sure it works for Stephen King you know 
sure it works for for people like that but for a mid-list first time author out there trying to make his name it people not that many people are going to come by and pay 10 bucks for a kindle for a digital copy when there's a lot of good books out there for 2.99 3.99 so i i just ran a big sale a week ago and and i i was in the top 3000 cuz i was selling my book my first book in my series for 99 cents I was in the top 3,000 of all books uh, sold by all authors on Amazon. It didn't last very long, but it was really cool there for a minute. So, I mean, I was making sales. But if I was traditionally published, that, that wouldn't have happened. And it got a lot of exposure for me. I had a lot of people buying books, and I've already had some reviews coming in. So that's a business decision I made that I wouldn't have been able to make if I was traditionally published. So there's that. Um, and like I said, you are your, you are your own boss. Um, anyway, that's some of the pros. Oh God, this video's on checking the time. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun here at the writing lair. Um, some of the pros that I just mentioned can quickly be flipped around and turn into, the, into cons. So I let's go over the, some of the cons. Um, one of the cons is, uh, <laughs> You have to do all the things that a publisher normally would do. And you have to be willing to do that. And a lot of people aren't willing. They want to write their book. And they don't want to worry about finding an artist to do the cover work. They don't want to worry about looking for an editor. And not only that, you have to pay for it. So you, you have to find your own, what I have written down here, cover designer, editing, and marketing. That's all on you. No one's doing it for you. And uh, you have to pay, you know, if you're going to do a, if you're hiring a graphic artist, a designer to do your book cover, which is very important. Uh, they, <laughs> you, you've got to have a professional looking cover. But like I said, uh, you know, editors cost a lot of money and, and you have to find a way to either pay a lot of money to be editor. You have to find a way around it. There's, there's ways, there's workarounds if you know the right people and, uh, you know, there's ways to, but anyway, I'm, I don't want to get off on this, but that's the publisher would normally do all that stuff for you. You have to do it. And marketing's the big one. Okay. Coming up with ads, coming up with ad campaigns, strategies to sell your book. Uh, I spend almost as much time advertising and coming up with schemes and, and scams. I'm going to say scams, but coming up with ways to sell my book my books and promote my business I spend almost as much time on that as I do actually writing because if you don't market you're not gonna sell that's that's a myth okay maybe I should do another video called common myths of self-publishing a myth that I thought my belief when I got into it was that I just get my book out there uh, I knew I'd written something really good I knew the summoning was a good book and and I was excited about it and I thought a few people are gonna read this they'll leave a five-star review on Amazon and poof, like the ripples in the pond you know that it's gonna it's gonna uh, it'll go word by word of mouth word of mouth that's the most powerful that's the most powerful way to sell something I, I and I, I really thought that's all it would take well within a very short time all of the people I knew my friends and my family had bought the book a few had left nice really good reviews and people were really excited about it and it was really fun but i reached this point after a few weeks where sales went <laughs> and i didn't know what to do i was like whoa how come word of mouth how come people aren't buying my book of course how come the word of mouth isn't you know well i had to learn i've been and i'm still learning how to market and how to advertise and i have to spend money to make money is what i found out um I advert that that big sale I had last week where I was boosting my sales that cost me you know I made I made back just like I made back the money I spent in advertising and then a little some but the profit margin wasn't that big by the time I paid for my advertising so you know I was just happy to move that many books I thought it was great I didn't care how much it cost I thought it was cool to have that many books moving but <clears throat> At some point, I'd like to make a living at this, uh, a full-time living, and so I've got to figure out how to 
you know, <laughs> get those numbers to, to, to change a little bit. I don't want to, I don't want my advertising to take up a hundred percent of my sales. Anyway, I don't want to bore you with marketing. I know people tune into YouTube to see marketing videos, but uh, that's a big one. Okay. Marketing's a big one for a lot of people. They don't want to do it. They just, that scares them. They're intimidated by it. And I get it. Okay. I'm not a salesman. I, uh, but you have to learn how to be a salesman. You have to learn how to sell, sell your, your you're kind of selling yourself. Hey, this is me. And you have to put yourself out there. So, uh, but marketing scares a lot of people and that's, and they would rather just go the traditional route. And I don't, I don't blame them. It's understandable. This is not a, this is not, I'm not telling people not to traditionally publish or self, but this is, this is just, Hey, this is <laughs> maybe you watch this video and you'll make a decision one way or the other. If I helped you out, then I, I hope so. Um, another con <clears throat> is you're up against a stigma. You're up against, I once had a friend, uh, come up to me. I, I had published my first novel. He had seen it on Facebook or whatever. He's a personal friend, and he didn't mean any harm by it. I think he was kind of kidding. But he he said, so you self-published? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he just goes, why? Because you couldn't get published for real? And, <laughs> you know, I kind of laughed. Ha, 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 you're hilarious. But there's truth. That that's really, he said it because he, that's what he's really thinking, right? Um, people are going to think that you self-published because you because you don't have what it takes to get traditionally published, and you have to overcome that stigma. I don't. I'm, I'm not here to tell you how to. I'm still trying to overcome that stigma. I think that's and and it's and, and it's a legitimate stigma. Okay, I understand. I I still I'm still prejudiced. I see self-published books. My I'm I'm an indie author, and I see other indie books, and I still approach with caution because I know um, what could be out there, you know, but. But uh, luckily, Amazon has its review system, and uh, you can generally tell. You can look at the reviews, and if the reviews look good, the cover's good. The you go to the page, you read the 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 synopsis. That sounds interesting. It seems written well. It's got your interest. You look at the reviews. It's got you know four, three and a half to four or five star rating out of several stars. Now you're now you're really interested, and you're just about ready to buy. Well, down you can download the first ten percent for free and read it, and if you if you like what you've read, that's usually at least a full chapter, then buy it. You know, so there's ways around the stigma. And I, you know, I try to push that. I'm like, but anyway, you do you you will have to overcome that, overcome that stigma, and uh, sometimes it just takes time. Enough people reading your books, and and I'm I in my personal career as an author, I am still fighting against that stigma i'm sure i i bet you i have a lot of friends on facebook that see my ads come across and just think oh isn't that cute <laughs> look at him try look at the look at the little guy he's trying so hard how cute no i'm sure i'm sure they're out there but um yeah so you got to overcome that and most of most of those people who think that probably aren't subscribed to my youtube channel they're not watching this so i can I can trash them a little bit. Okay, you're up against stigma. Um, another con is you won't see your own book at like Barnes and Noble and at the bookstores. Okay, that's to a lot of people. That's a measure of success to them. They want to see that book on that shelf at Barnes and Noble. They want to. They want to do a a book signing. You know, with with several hundred people lined up around the mall waiting to have you sign a book trust me i would i would love that too but as an indie author you kind of have to kind of have to kiss that notion goodbye you can you can arrange book signings you know uh with local bookstores they'll do it and you know maybe 10 people come through by your books i i have not tried it yet because i just don't have the um I just don't have the desire yet. I would like to do a book signing someday, but um, it's it's uh, as an indie author, the idea of going on a book tour and seeing your books in Barnes and Noble or some other bookstore, that's 
probably not going to happen for you and you have to be okay with that and that's for me i had to be okay with letting that idea of being an author go you know sitting at the table in a tweed jacket smoking a pipe and signing books probably not gonna happen okay <clears throat> um for everybody success means something different let me just put that out there success is different for me my idea of being a successful author is different than someone else's idea of being a successful author um, I feel like I'm successful because of what I've achieved up to this point but I want more success okay there's I have more goals I want to accomplish I want to keep going uh, I have goals in mind but I'm playing the long game and uh, so um, you know for other authors they don't consider themselves a success till they're on the New York Times bestseller list you know everyone has different goals everyone has a different uh, idea of what success is to them okay so just keep that in mind what whatever success means to you and uh, I you know suggest you do sit down and write it down write down some goals okay my last point here because I knew at this point I would be really long into it and holy cow I'm so long it's gonna be this video is gonna take forever to upload <laughs> On my Idaho bandwidth uh, there's no fat royalty check up front set your expectations low at first be ready to play the long game so I just talked about that a little bit okay you publish your first book and it's out there there's no money coming in it's a bunch of money doesn't come rolling in uh, unless unless you've hired some kind of publicist and you you know for it has happened it has happened to indie authors their book goes out that Robert Bidinato that I was telling you about earlier his book he had it the right book at the right time and it and he'll admit that if he tried to publish the same book today he wouldn't have he wouldn't see the same level of success but he was at that right time in the right place and his book just hit at, in the just hit and he was selling thousands of copies he was making these uh, uh, bestseller lists and Amazon lists and all this stuff and you know so it, it does happen it can happen you can do it you can there I personally know authors who are making a living they're making six figures uh, at doing this and so it's attainable it's it's not impossible and uh, but all the 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 stuff I said in here is my experience my perspective you have to love writing you have to love it and you have to have a thick skin and you have to be willing to overcome lots of self-doubt um, but if you don't love writing trust me this is not a get quick rich uh, program I would have been if, if all I was interested in is making money I would have far been better off spending my time delivering pizzas part-time and I would have made more money than I've made as an author okay that probably stings to hear and and I'm doing a lot better than most okay I'm on Twitter I interact with lots of authors on Twitter I'm not that exciting to follow on there I'm not that great you can follow me if you want but it's mostly authors following authors is what's going on on Twitter indie authors and we, we just kind of talk to each other and stuff but you know the, the people on there they'll say I haven't sold a book in three years you know people out there they're just dead their career they're just dead and so it doesn't have to be you but I'm just saying um, you have to be ready to to play the long game I'm playing the long game okay I'm and uh, so I've, I have a 10-year plan and you if you don't love writing you're not gonna make it you're not gonna hear <laughs> this you're not gonna do well so you have to love it. You, I, you have to love sitting down at that keyboard and churning out those stories. And that's kind of my final um, bit I want to say on it is if you love it, then you'll still do it regardless. And, and you know, and for now, I, I enjoy, to me, the, the reviews and the feedback is worth more than the, the actual royalties I'm making. You know, I make, I make, I make a little bit of money. I and uh it's but it's you know it's a very like i said i could have made more money delivering pizzas in my part-time than i have as an author 
but it sure wouldn't have been as fun. And so uh, this is great for me. Being an indie author is I love it. Um, if someone came along and offered me a traditional publishing contract, I'm not saying I would say no, but I'd really be looking at it because I'd, you know, it'd be hard for me to give up a lot of this, a lot of this stuff on my list. So, anyway, um, I'm getting a little long here. Uh, today's, uh, I was going to do a book recommendation. I wasn't really going to do a book recommendation. I was going to do a YouTube video recommendation since uh, I imagine most people watching this are, are writers and authors, people interested in writing. So uh, if you're a writer and you especially science fiction and fantasy, I want you to head on over to, and I will link, I, I'll have to find the link, I'll put it in the description, but there is a great lecture series by Brandon Sanderson. If you haven't heard of who Brandon Sanderson is, and you're writing science fiction fantasy, then I, I don't know where you've been living. But uh, Brandon Sanderson's one of the top fantasy sci-fi authors uh, in the world right now. I don't I don't know, <laughs> but and anyway, he uh, did a lecture series. I think it's twelve lectures for on creative writing and fantasy and science fiction, and he did it for uh, uh, Brigham Young University, and. Uh, he told them if I'm gonna do this I want they asked him they invited him to teach this class and he said if I do it I want to be able to record my lectures and put them on YouTube for free and the the university agreed so those videos there's 12 lectures and they're just excellent any writer you don't even have to be science fiction and fantasy if you're new and you want to learn this is a free college course okay it's 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 a free creative writing college course from one of the best authors of our time uh, teaching uh, at a university and, and it's like you're sitting there in the classroom so um, go on over that's my recommendation for this week go on over to that YouTube channel and I will leave a link to the lectures in the description of this video and go watch those videos and uh, you'll learn a lot about writing so I sure got a lot out of it anyway with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sign off for now. I appreciate you for watching. appreciate you for tuning in. If you found this uh, video to be interesting and uh, you know, you're, new to, you're new to this channel, again, I invite you to like and subscribe and help me out. Help me grow this channel. Help me grow uh, the writing lair into a bigger, into a bigger thing here. And uh, for those of you who stuck with me, even though if you're not writers and uh, just know that I, I am working on a, a good, true, scary story to share with you soon. I, I heard a doozy just the other day, and I got the chills. I was like, geez Louise. Okay. So I do have a scary story coming up. It'll probably be my next video. Until then, I wish you all happy reading. <clears throat> um, so, wow, I got, I got a tickle in my throat. <laughs> I'm going to edit that out.